Hi. Now we are going to talk in a new chapter, electromagnetic induction. Already we have learned the basics in electrostatic induction. Now we are going to see electromagnetic induction. Before going to the Faraday's experiments for electromagnetic induction, we will discuss the basic phenomena. Magnetic flux. You might have heard magnetism, magnetic lines of a bar magnet and all in magnetism chapter. Magnetic flux, it is similar to electric flux. Number of electric lines passing through a given area is electric flux. This is number of magnetic lines passing through a given area. Irregular shaped area you are taking. This is called normal of the area. Normal means perpendicular. Generally area is a scalar. But normal of the area we are taking. So this is a vector. This is magnetic induction. Or magnetic field induction, magnetic flux density B. Angle between these two is theta. So magnetic flux is number of magnetic lines passing through a given area. How many magnetic lines passing through you calculate? Since you talk this is a number, it is not a vector, it is a scalar. But number of magnetic lines passing through a closed surface. When you express in a formula, it is closed integral B dot ds. No, sir, B dot da only I will write. You can write, no problem. It is only a representation. Normal of the area. <coughs> that is phi is equal to B, D, A or C. Small portion of this one, D, A. Area we want to take that means you can take it as A also. So it will become A cos. B, A cos. So B is called magnetic field induction. or magnetic flux density. When you take theta is equal to 0 here, phi is equal to B A, then B I can write it as phi by A. So number of magnetic lines passing per unit area normally. How many magnetic lines passing per unit area normally? We call it as magnetic induction. This is a vector. Because area, normal of the area only we are taking. So this is a vector. Unit of phi. Unit of B. When you write the unit of phi, B unit easily can write. So this is represented by Weber. That is WB. So unit of B will be Weber per meter square. Weber per meter square, another unit is Tesla. Tesla is the unit. Weber per meter square or Tesla. Okay. No, sir, some basic units I want. I don't want in terms of Weber. I need in terms of basic unit. You can write. We heard whenever a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field, there exists a force. That force formula is given by F is equal to B I L sin theta. 
current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field experience a force this is the force formula theta 90 means i can write b is equal to f by il so unit f by il newton by ampere meter another unit for magnetic induction this unit we can take it here phi is equal to b into a so b unit is newton by ampere meter into area area is meter square cancel newton meter by ampere newton meter by ampere unit of phi weber one unit newton meter by ampere another unit magnetic induction three units weber per meter square or tesla or newton by ampere meter dimensional formula also we can calculate using this basic formula newton meter by ampere dimensional formula of phi newton meter newton for force ml t power minus 2 meter that is a unit of length l by what is this ampere ampere unit is dimensional formula a unit also a dimensional formula also a so i can write ml square t power minus 2 a power minus 1 b also we can write the dimensional formula for b dimensional formula newton force ml t power minus 2 by ampere a meter measure of length can cancel m a power minus 1 t power minus 2 m a power minus 1 t power minus 2 dimensional formula of magnetic induction so number of magnetic lines passing through a given area is magnetic flux number of magnetic lines passing per unit area normally we call it as magnetic induction so basic concept of magnetic lines of course we have discussed okay next what is electromagnetic induction the definition says the phenomenon of producing induced emf emf is induced what condition whenever there is a change in magnetic flux linked with a closed circuit circuit should be closed then only emf will be induced magnetic field or magnetic flux line should be changed simply if you give magnetic lines emf will not be induced so there should be some change in magnetic field change in magnetic lines of force so that is a phenomenon of electromagnetic induction okay fine so keeping this basic we will first discuss faraday's experiments for electromagnetic induction then we will go for faraday's laws based on the experiment we'll go for the laws okay two experiments we have first experiment coil magnet experiment what is coil magnet experiment sir sir you have a galvanometer and this is a coil more number of turns 500 1000 2000 range number of turns you have to keep you take a magnet north and south 
Initially, Faraday kept this magnet near by the coil. He expected a deflection in the galvanometer. When there is a deflection in galvanometer, if there is a current passing through, there is no current. He just kept the magnet nearby the coil. Then he kept the magnet inside the coil, tied it with a wire. He expected a deflection. No deflection. Finally, what he has done means he has moved the magnet. When you move the magnet towards the coil, when you move the magnet away from the coil, there exists a change in magnetic field. At that moment, galvanometer is deflecting. That means there is a induced EMF. Induced EMF is current is also produced. Because of the current, there is a deflection in the galvanometer. So change in magnetic field induces an EMF. When you move north pole or south pole towards the coil, there is a change in magnetic field. Galvanometer is deflecting. When you move the magnet away, that time also magnetic field is decreasing. Magnetic field decreasing, increasing is not a concept. Change in magnetic field is there. So there exists an EMO. Correct? Fine. This is Faraday's coil coil experiment. Galvanometer deflection towards the right, galvanometer deflection towards the left, more deflection on the right, more deflection on the left. Everything depends upon movement of the magnet. Faster you move, greater the deflection. So the EMF induced here depends upon the speed of the magnet. Of course, the number of magnetic lines which is passing through is very important. When you move the magnet faster, more deflection. Because more number of magnetic lines cutting the coil in a shorter time. So, the deflection is more. Another experiment. Second one. Coil-coil experiment. Primary coil, secondary coil. You have a core. In that core, coil, one primary coil, there exists a battery. You have a key. Battery pass through negative. Current I is passing through. Another coil on the other side with a galvanometer. When you press the key, the current is increasing. The current, when it is passing through the coil, there exists a change in magnetic field. That magnetic field will go to the secondary coil. Secondary coil, change in magnetic field is produced. Change in magnetic field means EMF is induced. Galvanometer is reflecting. You are given a very small amount of current only in the primary coil, sir. That too, at the time of pressing the key, current increases. That moment, change in magnetic field in primary, shifted to change in magnetic field in secondary, there exists a galvanometer deflection in secondary coil. When you release the key, current decreases. When current decreases, there exists a change in magnetic field. Primary coil, change in magnetic field, secondary coil, there exists an EM. So this is primary coil, secondary coil together. When we pass current through the primary coil, this is the thing happening. So these are the two experiments by Faraday to Introduce the concept electromagnetic induction. Now, combining the experiments, there are two different laws of Faraday. Uh, 
Faraday's laws. of EMI. Two laws we have. Whenever there is a change in magnetic field or magnetic flux linked with the closed circuit and EMF is induced. That should be a change. How long that EMF will exist sir? As long as there is a change in magnetic field, EMF will be there. If the change in magnetic field is stopped, EMF is also stopped. So whenever there is a change in magnetic field or magnetic flux linked with a closed circuit and EMF is induced. The EMF induced is numerically equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux. We have discussed when you move the magnet faster, more EMF because more deflection in the galvanometer, more EMF. So it depends upon the speed of the magnet. What is that N, sir? N called number of turns. Generally, if I is equal to BA cos theta is a basic formula for N turns. Total flux. Capital Phi, NBA cos theta. N Phi is NBA cos theta. You can remember easily NBA, NBA. Band, BAN, band cos theta. That also you can take. Okay, N Phi is equal to K, that K is equal to 1. That is his argument. So the rate of change of magnetic field or magnetic flux linked with the closed circuit is numerically equal to the EM of induced. This is Faraday's second law of electromagnetic induction. Okay. Now, very important concept. Lenses law. Lenses law. According to lens, he argued that, sir, you have a galvanometer. You are moving the magnet towards the coil. Lens says, when the magnet is moving towards the coil, some other opposing force is created here. That opposing force is restricting the movement of the magnet. How can it restrict? Sir, you are only moving the magnet. But some opposition you can see when you move the magnet towards the coil. Something is opposing means what you can keep it here. A similar pole is said to be created, then only opposing force. So, overcoming this repulsive force, you are moving the magnet. So, the formula changes to minus d by dt of n phi because something is opposing. There exists a negative sign because of opposition. Okay. Sir, how can you prove this? You do the experiment right now. Take a coil with a galvanometer. Move the magnet towards the coil. When you move your hand, feel something is restricting here. I am moving north pole towards that. This is south, this is north. I am moving north pole towards the coil. You move north pole. There exists a north pole here. Then only repulsive force. You can feel. You take two magnet. Ma. Keep it very close. North pole, north pole close. Your hand feels some repulsive force. Light poles repel. Like that a repulsive force will be created. 
If you say Lenz's law is wrong, it should not ripple, no. It should be attracted. Okay. And one more important concept that is Lenz's law is a good example of conservation of energy. What is conservation of energy? When you move the magnet towards the coil, there is a repulsive force overcoming you are moving the magnet. Then you can see some heat is created in the coil. Heat energy is created. Immediately, law of conservation of energy will come. What? Energy cannot be created. It should be only transformed. Where it is transformed, sir? When you move the magnet towards the coil, there is a repulsive force. Overcoming the repulsive force, you are doing some work against the repulsive force. That work done is converted as heat energy in the coil. You are doing some work. That work will be converted into heat energy. So, lenses try the good example of conservation of energy. If you argue Lenz's law is wrong, your basic assumption will be proved wrong here. How? You are moving the magnet towards the coil. You assume Lenz's law is wrong. Then what pole to be created here? South pole. When you move the magnet towards the coil, because of opposite polarity, there exists an attractive force. You are moving in addition to that attractive force. So, kinetic energy of the magnet increases uh, more magnetic uh, power. That means what? Strength of north pole, south pole still increases. So, the magnet will be attracted faster. More reflection in the galvanometer. At one particular dial, you need not move by attraction itself, the magnet will move. That is not happening. When you do the experiment, magnet itself, how it is? It's not a magnet. When you move the magnet towards the coil, you can feel the repulsive force. Overcoming that only or moving the magnet. For that opposition only, you are putting a negative sign. How to show the opposition? Overcoming the repulsion, you are moving the magnet. But how the EMF induced in the circuit will show its opposition? It will simply hitting the coil. The work what you have done by moving only converted as heat energy. So, Lenz's law is a good example of conservation of energy. Faraday's formula, Lenz's formula, both are same, except one important change. The induced EMF in the circuit opposes the change that induces it. Always opposes the source. That is the normal. That opposition only we are putting a negative sign. Correct, Amma? So, magnetic flux, magnetic induction, Faraday's experiments, Faraday's loss of EMI, Lenz's law. How Lenz's law is in accordance with law of conservation of energy? We have discussed. Now, we will go for self-induction. What is called self-induction, sir? You consider a coil, battery E, you are passing current through the coil. At the time of pressing the key, current starts increasing, producing a magnetic field here. So, there exists a change in at the time of pressing the key alone. Continuously, you press it, nothing will happen. That moment you press the key, magnetic field changes. Change in magnetic field induces EMF in the same coil, which opposes the original EMF. That is called self-induction. So, the magnetic flux produced in the coil 
is proportional to the current passing through the coil. Greater the current, greater the magnetic flux. Or phi is equal to constant L into I, where L is called coefficient of self-induction. Coefficient of self-induction. We want to define L. L is equal to phi by I. When I is equal to 1 ampere, L is equal to phi. What is the meaning? The coefficient of self-induction is numerically equal to the magnetic flux linked with the coil. When the current passing through the coil is 1 ampere. This is one definition. Okay. Right. Now define this. Differentiate. Differentiate. Equation 1 with respect to time. What do you get? d phi by dt is equal to L into di by dt. By Faraday's law, just now we have seen rate of change of magnetic flux is Em of induced. But opposing, so minus. L into di by dt. I want to define L. So what will you get? E by di by dt. When you say di by dt is 1 ampere per second, I can write L is equal to minus E. When current changes at the rate of 1 ampere per second, L is equal to minus E. Again you can define how? The coefficient of self-induction is numerically equal to the EM of induced. Sir, I want to indicate the minus sign also, sir. Indicate. The coefficient of self-induction is numerically equal to the opposing EM of when when the current changes at the rate of 1 ampere per second. Condition you have to tell. At 1 ampere per second, L is equal to minus E. That is the condition. Unit of L is Henry. Henry also you can define. This is 1 Henry. Then this is 1 volt. EM of unit is volt. 1 Henry is a unit of self-induction, which is numerically equal to the opposing EMF of 1 volt. Same condition. When current changes at the rate of 1 ampere per second. Correct, Amma? Simple concept. Two definitions for L and one definition for Henry. Self-induction. 